to take advantage of situations when they present themselves. And while the snow looks great on TV to the fans, not easy for those guys on the field. Scoring's going to be difficult in the second half, but that was great work there to find the end zone. The point after, no gimme in the snow, but it's up and good. And that will tie our game here in the third. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They did what they had to do to start this third quarter, went down, got the touchdown to cut the lead, but the matching touchdown a moment ago, and we're right back where we started at halftime. Yeah, you're exactly right, partner. They had a little bounce in their step after scoring that first touchdown, but the defense gave one up, and that's the problem right now. Can they get better play from their defense while they continue to score on offense? So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Right back to him on first down. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Looking to throw. Madden. And he'll let this one go deep for Chark. He's got a man complete. Touchdown, Jaguar. D.J. Chark, touchdown number 18 on the year. And the Jaguars are within an extra point of tying this one up. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. And this will be a Jaguars first down as he's got this up to the 40-yard line. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. Throwing on first down. Madden. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Well, there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big-time situation in the fourth quarter. Picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? You want to make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time. And that's what he did, although you and I both know. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Carter Landry with touchdown number 23 here on the year. And the Jaguars have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know, this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there. Not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Oh, well, this is taken in. It's complete. And finally, he's taken down at the 18. It's a big play for the Jaguars. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. And it's caught. Touchdown. DJ Shark with his 19th touchdown, his second of the game. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. So whatever happened to rookie... Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. 
They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, now you get it. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes in bounds there. A big connection on that one. 39 yards. We see this happen so often. If you're a defender, it's like watching a bad movie over and over. The pressure is good, forcing the quarterback out of the pocket. But it's a lot to ask for these defenders to stay plat. And he's across for the touchdown, and it's likely the game winner here in the closing stages. So for those of little faith, guess what? It got done. They now have the lead with that touchdown this late in the contest. I wonder if that was a play they were holding or a play that they just knew would work from past experience. Well, I just saw it in their eyes on the sideline before starting that last drive. Well, Charles, they were close in the end, but they couldn't get that last play, that last little miracle play done. They were within striking distance, but couldn't find a way to score. They definitely had hope. They definitely had opportunity. Just unable to cash in at the end. Not an easy play by any stretch, but they definitely had a chance. So for Jacksonville, they have indeed reached a perfect 16-0, but now still one game remains before they join the 07 Pats and the 72 Dolphins as the only teams to finish a regular season unbeaten. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. So when it all comes down to it, the Jaguars won a matchup that featured heavy snow. And you know, it's funny. You ask any football purist, and they'll tell you that they love how weather can have an impact on the game. But ask them if a Super Bowl should be hosted in a cold weather city. And man, do you see opinions start changing. Not a Super Bowl. Am I right? Now look, I get it. There's a concern casual viewers would lose interest in what might turn out to be a low-scoring game with a side of sloppy play. But it's definitely not unheard of. And I know Seattle fans right now are nodding their heads saying, yep, we won ourselves a Super Bowl, Super Bowl 48, in the shadows of New York City at MetLife Stadium in Jersey, a game that kicked off in 49-degree weather. By the way, they were lucky it was unseasonably warm that night. And by the way, I should point out thank you to my researcher, Tommy, for sliding me that nugget just now. Well done, T. Because he's smiling on the other side of the glass. He, he knows most days this show should be called OT with KC and Tommy. But anyway, let's get back to that Super Bowl in 2014. Was it risky? Of course it was risky. But do you remember the final score? And don't worry, Tommy's got it written down right here. 43 to 8. It was the opposite of low scoring, but I don't know. To roll the dice again on such a marquee event, I mean, we've all seen what advertisers are willing to pay to be a part of the big game, so there's more than just the on-field product to consider, if you catch my drift. 